Fast forward with Hyperloop One. The mission to revolutionize travel and shipping has a new partner. Richard Branson's Virgin Group is now investing in the Hyperloop. That's the super fast transportation system first dreamed up by Elon Musk. The newly rebranded Virgin Hyperloop One has just raised $85 million in funding and it is ready to take on the world. Joining us right now is the co founder and the co executive chairman of Virgin Hyperloop One and managing director of Sherpa Capital, Shervin Pishivar. Shervin, good to see you. Hey, good morning. Thank you so good much for joining you. us. So you've been investing, you, you're obviously a, a very successful venture capitalist. You've put your own, uh, you've got your money into some interesting stories. Why was the Hyperloop so important to you? Well, today, uh, when I landed, I was stuck in traffic for a very long time. And as I looked around, I saw most of the cars, 90% of the cars had one person in it. So our transportation solutions and our infrastructure are under a lot of stress and a lot of pollution being created in the world. So Virgin Hyperloop One, now with Richard Branson joining, and uh, the new investment round is going to enable us to go from the R&D phase where we prove the technology works to video that you just saw uh, was our Kitty Hawk moment. Uh, Josh Geigel and I, as co-founders, uh, we had this dream that we would be able to transport people and things at 700 miles per hour, and it's happening. Uh, it's real. And now we go into the commercialization phase, and having Richard Branson as a partner, and having Virgin Hyperloop One go out there and begin to get these contracts to begin building this uh, is about to happen. So we're at the dawn of the commercialization of of Hyperloop with Virgin Hyperloop Incredibly One. exciting. And how do you commercialize that around the world? Uh, Munich RE, they just said this is a viable solution, it's insurable, so it's got to be good for you. Yeah, no, those are all positive signals. Uh, now with governments around the world, we were in uh, the, the actual studies with them, <clears throat> the first contracts to build uh, the first uh, Hyperloops with Virgin Hyperloop One are going to start to happen within this, uh, this coming year. So uh, we'll be able to break ground on, on some of those projects around the world. Most likely, it'll be in the Middle East um, and Asia. Um, but we're also very hopeful that uh, the types of infrastructure vision that uh, exists here in America, that we can basically begin to build uh, Virgin Hyperloop One in the US as well. Mm. And the dream would be to connect New York to DC and do 35-minute travel. Uh, city center to city center. This uh, basically turns our cities into metro stops. It unlocks the ability to live and work wherever you want, and it creates a lot of economic activity and, and growth. It totally changes communities, where you can live and where you can work. I'm a big fan of what the Hyperloop is uh, potentially capable of doing, and I think will do. The political problem, though, mm. I mean, building a Hyperloop between uh, Vegas and, and Los Angeles just yeah. seems impossible. Yeah. How, how, are you having much success dealing with the political right-of-way issues? Yeah, I mean, the U.S. regulatory side, there's a lot more complexities because of our whole federal, state, and local, uh, you know, structure, which is, you know, that's what makes America great. And it comes with the cost of some of that regulatory tax of slowing things down a little bit. That's why uh, focusing on the international side makes a lot of sense. Uh, being able to look at, you know, areas like the Silk Road, uh, One Belt, One Road, being able to look at, uh, the Middle East, uh, Europe, and other areas. Um, uh, but most likely, those projects will go first. But you know, as an American, I, I uh, you know, a little biased, and would love to uh, have this here in, in our own nation For sure, yeah. uh, and create lots of jobs. Um, but also, this is a multi-decade project, so we're patient. Yeah. I agree with John. I mean, I think the political thing will be a bigger challenge to get the right of ways than the technology. But tell us about the technology. Is this magnetic lab? What what are you what is the mechanism by which you're going to move mm -hmm. us at 700 miles an hour? Right. So we're already moving. We did uh, almost 200 miles per hour with you saw the video full scale yeah. in 500 meters and stop safely to kind of stress test it. Now, as you extend that, if you go to three kilometers, we would hit 700 miles per hour. So we're already there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've proven that works. Uh, it'll feel to the consumer, it'll feel like a uh, taking off on an airplane. Uh, so it'll be a comfortable kind of you know, acceleration from there. Um, and then the cargo side is, is another really important aspect to that. The business model really is based on the cargo, shipping, and logistics side. Mm -hmm. And it also unlocks the ports of all the world. So if you look at the ports on the waterfronts of cities around the world, this is why um, uh, Sultan is uh, one of our board members, the, uh, the uh, 
the founder of DP World, is one of our investors. They own 70 ports around the world. Huh. You can move these ports inland and unlock all the real estate uh, for, on the waterfronts of all these cities. That's trillions of dollars of, of real estate value that you unlock. So the passenger side is subsidized by that side of the business model. Well, what a huge project. And 